We are almost ready to paint Flying Coney, but first we have to pressure wash her and tape off everything that needs no paint, like the anodes. The big task for this year is to get the hull fixed from the outside. We hope this could be achieved by good pressure wash and a little bit of paint. When we hauled out the boat, we discovered a very severe corrosion damage. So now we are facing a labor extensive, very expensive and extended time in the shipyard. Hello, it's so good to see you again. I am Barbara and together with Daniel I restore this historic steel ship Flying Coney. We are almost done with this shipyard time and next time we will finally start painting. So this time is all about the preparations for painting. But before we start into this video, I want to welcome all our new supporters on Patreon and Paypal. And a huge thank you goes to all our officers. Your constant support and generosity really brings this project forward. Thank you so much. And now let's bring you up to date. So far, we ripped out all the interior from the saloon, underneath the aft cabin and in the forecastle, And removed a lot of dusty old cork insulation together with some frames. After that, the lads from the yard repaired the very big corrosion damage. And we called in an expert who discovered a very big hole. And while the shipyard was repairing this hole, we continued with massive destruction and removing a tank from hell. Eventually, we started de-rusting the waterline and preparing the hull for painting. While doing so, we found another big hole and got rid of it by simply removing an overplating and setting our boat on fire. Then we removed even more rust at the stern and to our very big surprise the hull underneath it was in pristine condition. Finally we finished this enormous task with a layer of two component primer. Ultimately Flying Coney got a new commercially rated Seawolf and the class surveyor came one more time to inspect the hull and he made sure that the ship is safe for sailing. Well I believe for the, for the Costco uh, we can say now uh, today it's good. So what's up next? During our stay in the shipyard we had a lot of new neighbors. Each of them got pressure washed right after the haul out. And the filth landed on the slipway and on Flying Coney. So over the time Flying Coney collected the dirt of many other ships. And it didn't bother us too much until now. But now we want to paint. And before we can do that we have to clean Flying Coney. This shipyard time really got us started at the refit project. I think without it we would still rip out the interior wondering what to keep and what to throw away, slowly procrastinating our way through the ship restoration, because we were kind of afraid to really start the refit. Everything you work on is big, you have no idea where to start or how anything works. We just felt a bit overwhelmed by all the tasks that laid in front of us. But when we came to the shipyard, all of a sudden we had to start to work on the boat. Now, we had to make progress and we had to make decisions. And that was exactly what we needed. With such a refit project, it is easy to think about each and every step for months without making any progress. But when we were in the shipyard and paid for every day on the heart, it was more important that things are done than that they are done perfect. In other words, Done is better than perfect. And in hindsight, I think that is the only way to work on such a big refit project if you ever want to finish it. preparing the boat for painting now and first step is to clean the decks and 
that worked out quite quite well. Also, at some parts where the deck was really dirty, um, we cleaned the deck by removing the top paint. So I actually don't know why that happened because it's only on the starboard side of the ship and on the other side it was possible to clean it. Don't know. It's always a bit difficult to show the dimensions of the boat in the videos. Whenever someone visits us who knows Flying Coney just from YouTube, he's always a bit shocked by her size. But I think the pressure wash shows the scale of the boat and the amount of work quite well. I mean, how long can it take to pressure wash a boat? We thought it might be some hours, but in the end, it was a complete day. We spent quite a time in the shipyard. Over the months we saw many ships come and go. We saw ships that just got new anodes and new anti-fouling. We saw props, shafts, rudders and even engines being taken out, both rusters being installed, holes being fixed. I think we saw basically every task you can think of in such a shipyard. And that really helped us. Flying Coney will always stay a big ship, but watching the lads from the yard work on those ships handle big parts all on their own and repairing these old steel vessels that really get us started into this whole refitting stuff. We started to think different. Now we look at projects and suddenly understand how to tackle them because we watched others doing similar stuff before and learned how to make things work. What I try to say is this shipyard time really helped us to get the right mindset to restore Flying Coney. One day we'll hear the sounds that can liberate us and take us out of hell. Come that day we see the end. Just start up some angel band. Leave the world and all those things we fought down there so far below. Just bring my whole piano. Maybe a chair so I can sit up there playing. George and Harry, John and Jerry, gonna have ourselves a show. I heard it said so long ago. And I'll be saved by rock and roll. And I'll be saved by rock and roll. Now the next step is to pressure wash the underwater ship again um, that we have a cleaner surface for painting, less dust. Even so, the shipyard time was definitely necessary, first of all to save Flying Coney from corroding away and second to finally start this refit project, I have to say that I don't want another shipyard time like that. Discovering new problems almost every day and working really hard to bring Flying Coney back into the water as soon as possible, all that was no fun. So for the next shipyard time, we want to be prepared. This time we know exactly what needs to be done, we can roughly estimate the amount of work it will take and hopefully we will find some volunteers that help us to bring Flying Coney back to life. If you want to help, then please let us know. We've set up a page where you can get in touch with us. The link is in the description. So right now we are planning the next shipyard time, which will be this summer, to repair the broken frames, blast Flying Coney's hull and put on a new coating. And we are really looking forward to those next big steps.
cleaning is a process where you transfer dirt from one place to the next place. In this case, I transferred dirt from and dust from the boat on me. So it's cold, I'm wet, it's dark, but the boat is prepared for painting. It's dust free, it's nice, nice and clean. So tomorrow we can start primering the is it called primering? Well, we can start with the primer tomorrow and that's good. It was already quite late in the year and the days were getting shorter and the weather was getting worse. So we had to make compromises to get the paint on. You will see that we paint above the rusty scrub rail and we know that's not how you should do it. But it would have taken another week to de-rust it and we had no idea when the next weather window for painting would be. So we decided to paint over the rust and hope that it will last until the next shipyard's time. And spoiler! It's holding up quite well. We are almost done with the two component primer. Last time when we painted it was already dark and we used the torch to see where we have the spots that needs to be painted. And it seems that we missed some right here. So today we finally start with the one component primer, we tape off the parts of the ship we want to paint and we prepare the area above the waterline for the one component primer. And that's a big step towards going finally into the water and we are really looking forward to have the boat finally painted. Another compromise we made was painting only the hull and not the bulwark. The paint of the bulwark was still in good condition with almost no rust, so it wasn't absolutely necessary. It saved us a bit of time and we got the chance to see what Flying Coney would look like in two-tone, which is a quite common color scheme for traditional fishing vessels here in the Netherlands. And I'm really curious what you will think about it. But before we can start painting, we need to tape off the anodes. We get new shiny aluminum anodes in this shipyard's time. They work in fresh and in salt water and the idea is that they dissolve themselves instead of flying cone's steel hull. But they only work without paint on them. And since we want to spray flying cone's hull, we need to tape them off. And we really hope they will protect flying cone from any new corrosion damage. As you will see in the next video, Flying Cone's hull will be painted with a spray gun. And since that is not that accurate, we had to paint the upper 20 cm or so with a brush. And since we were already on the working platform, we decided to give the hull a quick sanding and wipe off the dust for paint preparation. We thought a lot about the best paint preparation for Flying Cone. 
we talked to other yacht owners, we read books about it and we watched videos. So we bought a sanding machine and sandpaper, we bought primer and we bought paint. And we thought a lot about how to get the hull clean and dust free before painting. And then we came to the shipyard and we realized Flying Coney is no yacht. And all the other ships here don't care that much about paint preparation. As long as the hull is somewhat clean, they paint. No sanding, no dust wiping, nothing. And I know there are possibilities to get a really good paint preparation even for big ships like Flying Coney. But not when you work outside in the shipyard. Each time we got the hull cleaned, another ship got pressure washed and we had to start all over again. So in the end, we did our best. We pressure washed the hull, we sanded it, we cleaned it with pressurized air, we wiped everything down with thinner and we taped off the bulwark to get a nice straight line. And now we hope this will be sufficient for a nice paint job. We are done with the primer, the anodes are taped off and the hull is ready for painting. But that's all we have time for today. So unfortunately you have to wait one more week for the painting. In the meantime you can watch our playlist with all the refitting videos. If you are new to this channel you should definitely do this. I mean you can't start in the middle of a refit project, you don't even know what brought us here. So go watch them right now. For all the others it might be a good preparation for launching. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.